Nestled within the picturesque woods of Northern Virginia lies Virginia International Raceway, a 17-turn road course, more tuned to the gentlemen racers of the world than those piloting IndyCars. In fact, IndyCar has never visited this facility. Historically, all of IndyCar's visits, visits to the Old Dominion State have been to the current Richmond Raceway Oval, where the series has stopped a total of 11 times between 1946 and 2009. Tonight, we have a battle on our hands as the PRI Formula Indy Series takes to the VIR road course for what might be the most pivotal race of the season. In eight races, the series has seen eight different winners. Two of those drivers, points leader Nate Seifert and second place Caleb Bensey, are only separated by a scant 18 points. And with each driver suffering some type of incident over the past couple of races, it has prevented each other from stretching their leads, bringing this season to finish down to the wire. Both could badly use a needed top 10 finish, or better yet, both could equally use a second win to break the 8 for 8 trend of the league, vaulting themselves into a position of dominance before the series crowns a champion next week in Brazil. Before this night is over, we will have a better idea of how next week will look as we will move on to crowning a second ever champion of this new series. Hello again, everybody. I am Gary Gatso, and welcome to Race Race Coverage Round 9 of the PRI Formula Indy Series coming to you from the Virginia International Raceway. For the Virginia is for Burritos Grand Prix, sponsored by Fat Bastard Burritos. Right now, currently watching Christian Jasper on the course. We are about eight minutes and 20 seconds left here of qualifying for provisional pole qualifying. Principal Dan, last week's winner, is on the pole with a 130.194. Uh, your points leader, Nate Seifert, a 130.298. Uh, we have uh, a newer driver currently in third, Matthew Short. Uh, with a 130.304. Uh, Alex Vanessant, VDS there with a 130.334. And uh, we have Rodrigo Munoz uh, with the Backfire team there with a 130.369. Give you a quick idea of what that translates to in miles per hour to give you an idea. Also put up the track map for you. <clears throat> To give you a better idea of how uh, this course looks, this is a really the first time here. This is my first time here as well. As you see, it's not a very technical course. Uh, currently watching uh, Christian Jasper, who is uh, currently provisionally 16th as he's coming into turns um, uh, real quick, uh, 14, 14A and 15 right through here. One of the two slowest points on the course. Uh, coming to 16, then the what they call the hog pin and then on to the main straight. Crossing the start finish line here. Coming to turn one, and he might be done with his run, so that's probably why he's slowing down. This is turn one, which they are calling the horseshoe. And he's resetting, so we will uh, get a new uh, driver probably on the track, there is Principal Dan, last week's winner. He's currently on the, I guess what you would call the back stretch. He might be done with his run too. He is uh, flying solo this week, unfortunately his uh, his teammate reached the incident limit for the league and uh, is done for the season, unfortunately. So uh, he is racing solo. He is third place in the points. We'll take a look at the points here in just a moment. <clears throat> take a look at last week's results there featuring Principal Dan. Winner from Zolder, Nicholas Johnson P2, ran him down there at the end, got real close. Alex Vandesant P4, Armando Edwards P, or excuse me, P3, Armando Edwards P4, and Don Hunter P5. Driver standings. 
You see, uh, actually, Nate Seifert has a five-point uh, lead now over uh, Principal Dan and Caleb Bensey. i change up my intro a little bit to be more accurate, but uh, it is a uh, five-point lead over Principal Dan. And a 34-point lead over Caleb Bensey. Alex Van Ascent, uh might just barely be out of the championship contention here coming in the last couple races of the 181. Gavin Sanders, defending champ, probably is not going to repeat here. It's just had a little too much bad luck with 173. Rodrigo Munoz with the 169. Uh, Dory, like I said, done with the 161. So that's going to open the door for Dakota DeMed, Jeff Groff, and Armando Edwards to possibly make up a position here in the closing two rounds. Take a look at the team standings. Bulldogs are the leaders, but now they only have one driver over the next two races. And uh, they will be fighting a full lineup from FBR Motorsports with Seifert and Zeleznik. Uh, both will be in today's race, uh, so they will be able to maximize on points and make that points championship closer. It's going to be close to the end. Right now, old dogs have themselves a, a pretty good 60-point lead. Team race versus P3. Backfire North is P4, and on the power, pretty much a single driver. Uh, Gavin Sanders bringing Kamigawa Esports into P5 with 252 points. Not too far out of P4, but uh, in a close proximity to P6 there with Pack East Racing with Jeff Groff and Christian Jasper. Uh, they might make the move on Kamigoya this race and uh, move themselves into the top five. We shall see, uh, but as your current driver standings. Your Rookie of the Year standings coming on up. Nate Seifert, of course. Principal Dan, Alex Vanessant, Rodrigo Munoz, and Dory. Dory is, kiss again, done for the season. So those top four, that might actually change uh, again into next week. We shall see. But that is your top five for the Rookie Championship. Safest driver? Principal Dan has 113, or excuse me, uh, say, laps per incident. There were 13.5 laps for every incident, followed by Dakota DeMed, tied with uh, Rodrigo Munoz, Christian Jasper, and Gonzalo Munoz. Also uh, very close there, off just by a tenth uh, and fourth and fifth. Currently, anybody else here on the track? I think we have Christopher Hill in the PRI, Delara. <clears throat> Two minutes, 17 seconds, as he's going through what uh, turn 12 is called Oak. Obviously, has the Oak tree there. Hill currently provisionally ninth. Your provisional standings is Piazza, Sanders, Van de Sant, Johnston, Seifkert, Short, Munoz, Bensi, Hill, and Houston make up your top 10. Showing 25 cars here today. Not sure if all 25 will take time, but we shall see. Currently only showing one car on the track at the moment. That's Cody Claiborne. And he is looking to uh, finish up his run here. About a minute 12 left in qualifying. Again, your provisional sitter. Full sitter is Principal Dan with a 130.398 mile per hour lap. We're showing you miles per hour right there. We shall flip it back to... <clears throat> Best lap there in time, which is a 129.595. This is a 3.72 mile, 17 turn road course. Uh, basically, it's been rebuilt as kind of a, a racer's country club where the kind of you bring your car for the weekend, you race it here. Not much in the way of, of real professional racing goes on. IMSA does come here. 
Uh, in fact, the uh, track record is currently held by a uh, IMSA driver. It's Klaus Graf. Uh, he was in a uh, Honda ARX A3, uh, excuse me, um, ARX O3A LMP1 car set in 2012 with a time of 135.434. Uh, so these guys are moving faster uh, than the, the LMP1 car. And uh, that translates to a time of 123.352 miles per hour. Getting ready to do a small warm-up period here so we can read off the starting grid as we're getting ready to go green here shortly for the Virginia is for Burritos Grand Prix sponsored by Fat Bastard Burrito Company. And let's take a look at today's starting grid. Get some of these other... Uh... Graphics off. And actually, uh, <laughs> it says Monday Night Indie Fixed. Uh, but that is normally our Monday night show. Uh, I'm using a file that uh, should, be, uh, should be for our uh, FIS. But uh, we're showing the starting the grid regardless here. Uh, showing Principal Dan as the pole sitter with a 129.5. Gavin Sanders, uh, the defending champ with a 130.0 flat. Alex Vandesan with a 130.1. Nicholas Johnson with a 130.1. Nate Seifer with a 130.2. And Matthew Short with a 130.3. Moving on. Rodrigo Munoz is a P7. Caleb Bensi, P8. He is in a crucial need of a good finish tonight in order to remain close in this points battle. Christopher Hill, P9. Matt Houston, the boss man of P10. Armando Edwards, P11. And Chris Venezuela in P12. Jeff Groff, P13. Cody Claiborne with a good qual result for P14. Ellen Zelaznik, uh, P15. JJ Wang, P16. Logan Spath. P-17, and Christian Jasper, P-18. Zachary Flaum, P-19. Nick Goyette, P-20. Don Hunter, P-21. Hugo Gallas, P-22 with no time. Dakota DeMed, P-23 with no time. Charles Baldwin, P-24 with no time. And Peter Donchek, uh, P-25 with no time. And we're getting ready to go racing, folks. As we are lining up. There we go. We're getting a look here at our starting grid as they are slowly starting to populate here. There is Principal Dan. He has queued himself up. He is currently on the prime tire. Currently showing the first one on the alt tire is Nate Seifert. Right there, as you see the red sidewalls on his car. Gavin Sanders is not loaded in yet. Getting ready to go green here. They're going green. A couple cars have not loaded in. That's probably because uh, they are starting for the pits and we are racing. We are going three wide in the turn one. And Johnson on the outside is going to take the leaders. Wow, that's, wow. Almost, the leader goes off. Principal Dan goes off. Nate Seifert now is among the, has emerged the leader. A big break for Seifert. Joey Wang, Sanders, Short, uh, all had to start from the pits. Uh, so that's why they did not load in. That's why we were waiting on them. They should be on the track momentarily. But we are underway here at VIR. 
Seifert, Van de Sant, Johnston, Munoz, Bensi with a good start. Hill with a good start. Edwards, Houston, Valenzuela, and Groff make up your top 10 as we are coming down to turn 12. The Oak Corner, as they're calling it. Here is what the track looks like to give you a better idea since this is the first time we've, most of us have been here. This long front straight here into turn one called the Horseshoe. We have those corners listed here on the map for you to see. Currently watching P3, Nicholas Johnston. Here's turns two, three, and four. Uh, I believe it's called NASCAR Bend, and my understanding is uh, during the earlier days of this track, uh, some uh, stock car drivers came here to test and they had a particularly hard time with that set of corners. Down, uh, not quite a straight, not quite S's either. They can pretty much take this at full speed. This is the breaking point right here as they get into turn 12. And down the back stretch, which is pretty much a straight shot. car leaving the pits there. Uh, that looked like Hugo Gallas coming up to speed. He might have had an incident coming in the line right behind one of his uh, backfire teammates right in front of Christian Jasper. <clears throat> Gavin Sanders starting from the pits is well underway. He has moved himself up past Jeff Groff into P12. Already used a push to pass. The defending chow, Groff spinning. Back straightened up here. Been hearing from a lot of drivers that it is pretty slick going out there. There's really no benefit to the uh, the reds or the blacks in terms of speed. Looking about 14, 15, 16 laps for a tank here. You'll to see here a lot of ample runoff area, but uh, it's all grass, not a lot of kitty litter here. So when you go off course, uh, you are going to go sliding for a while. You do not want to get off course here at all. Currently a car off here. There's a uh, Logan Spath off in turns one and two area. Trying to come back up to speed here in front of the leaders. Back up front here is your leader, Nate Seifert, the points leader, trying to put this championship to bed. A second win this season might just do it for him. Hot on his tail is Nicholas Johnson. Not Nick as uh, 
joined the series in the last two races. He has a win and a second place. Currently is in another strong finishing position here very early on here at Virginia International. Rodrigo Munoz is on the move here, as well as Christopher Hill. Let's check out these two. Rodrigo Munoz up four spots. Hill up five as they've moved themselves into the top five around Caleb Bincy and are setting sail towards the leaders. And they are not... Uh, they, they are not slowing down at all. Looks like they are not even trying to uh, conserve any fuel and... Uh, we saw that uh, Christopher Hill got into the rear a little bit of Munoz, nudged him, allowed him to get back underway, but uh, um, Munoz definitely knows that Hill is there and is putting him under direct fire for P3 at the moment. Rodrigo, Munoz, and Hill. Christopher Hill are locking up there a little bit from uh, Johnston. But uh, Munoz and Hill are getting back uh, in the rhythm here after that small bit of contact there at Oak. Actually, it was in the horseshoe. My bad. It's like in a straight line, these guys are a little bit faster than uh, Johnston and Seifker. Scene of the crime last lap. Everybody threw safely. Right behind uh, Christopher Hill is uh, P is Caleb Bensey, P5, Alex Van Assant. Take a look at the closest battles on the racetrack at the moment. There you see Christian Jasper on push to pass. Alex Van de Sand in the 97. Right behind Caleb Bensey, who is P3 in the standings. And Principal Dan is out. We are showing him out in P23. So the championship, oh, getting wide there. Getting off track, back on track. That's going to allow Matt Houston to get close now. Alex gets a little wide. Like I said, if you go wide here, there is not any runoff area. There is no concrete. Uh, there are no extended uh, rumble strips. It's pretty much off onto the grass, and it is ice thereafter. That now puts uh, Alex Van de Sant right in the sights of the boss man, uh, Matt Houston as they are going right through turn one and two, three, four, and five complex, the whole NASCAR bend and left hook area. And then the five here. Alex getting wide again. I guess that maybe the uh, tires or his handling is going away. Down in the six, six A and into what they call the snake. Matt's managed to open up about a three-second gap to P8, uh, which is Christian Jasper. Let's go back a little bit further. Gavin Sanders has moved himself up a couple positions. He is now uh, working on uh, position number nine now as he is attacking Chris Valenzuela going down the backstretch. He is in the draft. 
Taking a look on the inside, out breaking him into the corner, gets the position. And now he sets sail to Christian Jasper. So the defending champ, the number one badge driver for the last year or last season, uh, Gavin Sanders moves himself up into the top 10. That was Hugo Gallas, I believe, getting out of the way there. Bit of a rough day for him. You actually see there in that corner and going through those uh, bit of S curves, how much uh, how much shorter distance Gavin Sanders is making it there through there than uh, Christian Jasper. Jasper is holding him off at the time being though as they come down to turns 11 and 12 into the Oak Tree area. Gavin with a look on the outside down the back stretch. Moves on by. He is now in P8. And now he has himself about a four second gap to Matt Houston. Back up front. Here's your leader, Nate Siefker. Points leader, leader on the racetrack. Looking like a good day so far. Still early. Lap nine of 38. Short Evan Zelznik that got around Don Hunter had a bit of a moment. He is back underway there in the uh, Miller Genuine Draft. Bobby Ray Hall liveried throwback there. Early in P13, right behind him is Charles Baldwin. Dakota DeMade has made his way up from the back of the grid into P15. He's worked his way around Jeff Groff. There in P16, Zachary Flaum. Looking on P17 as he's got the lapped car of Logan Spass in front of him. Spass moving over, letting Flaum on by. His teammate Goyette just behind him. Jody Claiborne uh, down five spots, bit of a rough start. But he is uh, clean and green at the moment. No one around him. Making some laps. Racing the race course at the moment. Getting those valuable points and lap times. Mentioned Logan Spath. There he is on the main straight. There's J.J. Wang. He's in P21. Hugo Gallas, like I said, had a rough day. Uh, he might be just trying to fill out the racetrack. Number of drivers did not get a lot of practice. Uh, he is currently uh, in P22. Armando Edwards still sitting on pit road. So uh, for an extended stay. Not sure if that is a... Uh, a choice or uh, something's going on there, but uh, we will check back in with him. We'll go back up to the front with the leaders. Uh, and Christopher Hill has worked his way around Rodrigo Munoz and is in the P3 now, as now we have a three-car breakaway. Uh, Munoz has now fallen the four seconds, five seconds abreast of these three right here. And we got a bit of a three-car breakaway up at the front. 
Zephyr Johnston and Hill. Hill right now, who's trying to line up an attack right now on Johnston as they are coming through the uh, not quite the back stretch, but the the snake to the back side of the course. Gavin Sanders has made his way around. Uh, Matt Houston has, has worked his way into this battle now. He is lighting this place afire at the moment. He is looking at Caleb Bincy at the moment. Push to pass situation for your leaders. Uh, Seifert with eight, Hill with ten, who has now moved himself in the second place. We need to watch this battle uphill, up here. Excuse me. Johnston uh, with ten, uh, Munoz with seven, Bincy with eight, Sanders with eight, Houston with eight, Valenzuela with ten, Jasper with eight, and Vandesant, who has really fallen down through the pack now, with nine. We go to the maid, uh, working his way up into. Uh, P13. Charles Baldwin uh, might have had an off moment. He might be done. Cody Claiborne, Don Hunter getting around. While we're watching the battle, let's do side by side and get a moment, uh, a word from uh, PRI. I'm the owner and chief instructor of Precision Racing Instruction. I've been coaching racing and high performance driving professionally for over 22 years. With experience in anything from carts to formula cars to rally cars to sports cars to sim racing and a bit of everything in between, I can help you no matter what form of racing you do. We specialize in a precision approach to improving both your car control and racecraft to make you the best driver you can be. For a limited time, we are offering a special deal for anyone who mentions the Formula Indy series, 15% off your first coaching session, either in the sim or in person. On top of that, I'm offering a one-time free video or data analysis for new students. Reach out to us either through Instagram or Facebook. As you see, the, uh, the battle here at the front has gotten a little bit tighter, but it's still this three-car breakaway at the moment. Coming to the first of what could be uh, two pit stops here relatively soon. For Hill, if he wins today, he keeps that uh, winners, uh, different winner streak currently open. Uh, it is eight for eight. If he wins, it'll be nine for nine. He is looking to the outside, going down into the horseshoe in turn one. Christopher Hill is side by side with the, the leaders. He goes off, he loses the position. Again, like we were saying, how narrow this place is. Once you go off, uh, you go right on the grass and it is very slippery. 
and allows Johnson to get the position back. And if we look back behind this battle here, uh, Gavin Sanders has moved another spot up. He's moved around. Caleb Bensi is now setting sail for Rodrigo Munoz in P4. Gavin Sanders, starting from the pits, is up to P5. We'll keep an eye on this battle as we go back up to the front. These three leaders are sticking together. But the next set of three with Munoz, Sanders, and Bincy, they are starting to come into the picture. Um, they've really uh, closed down this gap quite a bit. Munoz on push to pass, trying to stay ahead of his gap of uh, Gavin Sanders. Munoz has closed down this gap from about uh, five seconds now to um, just two seconds as the top three have been uh, fighting each other a little bit. Christopher Hill again getting a good run. And we have uh, some smoke here as uh, we're showing a little bit of incident. Somebody uh, ran off, but uh, Seifert is in the pits, hitting at lap 15. Uh, Christopher Hill has gotten around. Johnston has now in the lead. Got off a little wide there on the rumble strips, allowing Johnston to get closer. These tires are probably pretty well shot. Don't know uh, really what combination of tires that we're going to see. We're checking Seeker right now as he's back underway. He is back on the primes. Oh, and he's uh, flashing in and out there. This battle for the lead is getting tighter now. The top five are now all within uh, roughly uh, four seconds of each other. And 2.5 seconds of each other, actually. See the leaders coming down the pit straight. Uh, are they going to peel off? No, Munoz is pulling off. And he hits the cones and gets the pit speed. Very slow pit speed here. He looks like, uh, he probably feels like he's crawling. Looks like he's crawling. Getting to his spot. Getting the, uh, his spot pneumatic jacks down and away full tank he's back on the prime tires so he is sticking uh, with the harder compound at the moment because he's back underway behind Nate Seifert uh, he is uh, rejoining the field in P9 ahead of Jeff Groff in P10 Christopher Hill is still your leader Nicholas Johnson P2 Gavin Sanders P3 Caleb Bensey P4 Matt Houston in P5 Alex Vanessant has recovered a little bit uh, through uh pit stops and uh, has got himself back up to P6 on this rotation. Ilibinci going wide there at 12. Leaders coming down the long straight into 14 and 14A. Now we see him going through 15 and 16. Will the leaders make that turn onto pit road? Gavin Sanders, he's gonna make the run to pit road right here. He went 17 laps. Looks like Matt Houston is joining him on pit road at 17 laps. So they are splitting this race in half. Going 17 and 17. Valenzuela on pit road. Pit road is very busy at the moment. There's Alex Van de Sant on pit road.
he might have a problem. Alex Vanessant with a problem on pit road. Going back up to the front here are our leaders now. It is Gold Christopher Hill locking up with that right front. Going into that slightly off camber turn 12 down the back stretch. He's got Nicholas Johnston right with him. Johnston not making too much of an attack. He's probably willing to sit there and make some fuel mileage right behind him. Caleb Bincy in the three spot. Now needs to start thinking about championship. Hill off the pit road. Bincy off on pit road. Johnston will continue. He starts lap 18. Here come the leaders. We will watch the stop for Caleb Bincy as he hits his stall. Nate Seifert come by the main straights here, past pit road. And he is gonna get the position back from Caleb Bincy. Now we go back up to the front. Nicholas Johnston is your leader. Hey, if you want to get faster, check out Precision Racing Instruction. PRI will train you to be the best driver you can be with 21 plus years of professional racing instruction experience. Check out Precision Racing Instruction today on Facebook and Instagram for contact details. I want to thank PRI for being the title sponsor for season two of the Formula Indy Series. Coming to you right here on Race First. Nicholas Johnston. Oh, uh, Nick Goyette off in the far ground there, off uh, into the uh, woodlands there a little bit, to gathering it back underneath uh, on solid ground, back underway, but losing some time there. He is in currently P16. Nicholas Johnston, though, is continuing on, starting lap 19. Alex Vanessant looks like he has retired. I'm not sure what happened to Alex, but uh, his day appears to be done. Uh, currently showing uh, Armando Edwards, Principal Dan, uh, the pole sitter, Charles Baldwin. And Alex Vanessant currently out. Hugo Gallas is uh, conditionally P21. He will move the 20th uh, here in a couple laps here as he uh, catches up to where Alex Vanessant was. P19 is Logan Spath, who you just see uh, Nicholas Johnson putting a lap down. Still showing others on pit road. JJ Wang also on pit road. Be a possibly scheduled stop. Down and away. He is done for the race. He's good to go to the end. Johnson on pit road, starting lap 20. He will cross the start finish line, starting lap 20. That now puts Seifker in the lead. And he has Gavin Sanders hot on his tail. So we have now completed all the pit stops. We'll take another moment to uh, give a word for PRI and we will come back and reset the field here at the uh, Virginia is for Burritos Grand Prix at the uh, VIR Raceway. Kind of redundant. Uh, here on Race First, we'll be right back. 
I'm the owner and chief instructor of Precision Racing Instruction. I've been coaching racing and high performance driving professionally for over 22 years. With experience in anything from carts to formula cars to rally cars to sports cars to sim racing and a bit of everything in between, I can help you no matter what form of racing you do. We specialize in a precision approach to improving both your car control and racecraft to make you the best driver you can be. For a limited time, we are offering a special deal for anyone who mentions the Formula Indy Series, 15% off your first coaching session, either in the sim or in person. On top of that, I'm offering a one-time free video or data analysis for new students. Reach out to us either through Instagram or Facebook. We're back, 18 laps to go, and uh, Nate Seifert, your current championship points leader with only two races to go, actually now uh, about a race and a quarter to go on the schedule. We had what's left here, and then Interlagos next week. He is under uh, a, a big-time attack by Gavin Sanders. Gavin Sanders has uh, drawn that lead down to uh, a half second uh, from being over a second as he has reeled in Seifkert and uh, he has been the fastest car on the racetrack the entire race. He started from the pits. Uh, we've watched him move up from the uh, mid uh, mid uh, top 10 or uh, mid uh, top 20 there into the top 10s, into the top five, into the podium area. And now we see him battling directly for the lead uh, with a coming into the closing third of this race. These drivers are done uh, with their stops for this particular race. We see Gavin with the reds on. He does have the alt tires on, so he's gonna wanna get around Seifert as soon as he possibly can and build that lead up before those reds go off. This might be an interesting strategy choice by Gavin. We'll check it out here, see how this works out. Also, Seifert, can he go the distance? He stopped the earliest of everyone. He's currently on his sixth lap of the stint. Thanks for everyone who's watching from home. Don't forget to join us next week. Same time, same channel. That's at 845 Eastern. Now there's going to be a bit of a time change coming, so make sure that uh, you set your clocks accordingly coming this weekend. Uh, but uh, it will still be 845 Eastern at uh, on YouTube at youtube.com slash race first for the uh, final race of season two of the PRI Formula Indy series. And we will be coming to you from Interlagos. Uh, we have raced at Interlagos before, only in an exhibition race. And actually it was won uh, by uh, uh, actually the uh, uh, Kamagoya team there. Um, I believe it was, um, I believe it was uh, uh, his teammate at the time, Logan. Uh, with Gavin uh, that won that race and uh, that was one of the exhibition races they used to launch season one we'll, we'll be racing there for real for points and we might have ourselves a championship uh, battle on our hands coming into that event as uh, right now uh, right now the leader of the points uh, and the leader of this race is directly being attacked by the defending champion Gavin Sanders on the outside coming into turn one into the horseshoe does not have the fast, gonna do the inside over under. Gavin not on push to pass, but he is definitely faster at this portion of the racetrack. Uh, Gavin with a bit of a snake bit defending uh, season here, trying to defend his championship. Uh, gets taken out by uh, lap traffic, trying to uh, rejoin the race course while leading at Indianapolis in the opener. 
uh, gets taken out by starting from the pits. I mean, how do you get taken out by starting from the pits? But he got taken out from, from starting from the pits at Red Bull Ring when there was a big pileup at uh, turn one after the start at Red Bull Ring. Uh, he gets taken out there. Um, just incident after incident that seemed to have uh, snake bitten his second season. Uh, still giving a good effort, uh, looking to get his second win of the season. Keeping it tight here with Secret, the points leader and race leader. Wondering maybe if those reds are not as good as uh, they were before, as uh, there seems to be building up a bit of a gap there with Seifert over Sanders. Three tenths of a second gap there. bit of a blink from Masifker. Let's, uh, while this battle 10 is uh, starting to, uh, to calm down a bit, let's go back and take a look at the battle for P3. There's Rodrigo Munoz, who's uh, pretty much been in this position all race long. He is up four spots. He has had a great start and a great race at this point. Uh, Nicholas Johnston uh, led a couple laps, uh, went longest uh, on that last stint. He is definitely good to go to the end. He has the alt tires. Uh, he is trying to uh, get his third straight podium after a win in a second as he chases down Munoz. Back in P5, a little bit further on back, there is Christopher Hill in the uh, PRI-sponsored car. Matt Houston with a uh, very solid uh, top 10 here. Matthew Short uh, also in his uh, a relative newcomer to the league in P7. Don Hunter in P8. Christian Jasper currently in P9. Chris Valenzuela in P10. Now the biggest one that uh, we, we want to show you is Caleb Bency. He has fallen back to 12th. Not sure what issues he might have had. He might have had an off. We're not quite sure. But he is now struggling on these uh, alt or these prime tires as he is now uh, down to P12 and uh, behind Evan Zelznik, uh, who is in P11, who is a teammate to Seifker. So if Evan can get up into the top 10, that'll be a great day for that team getting two cars in the top 10. Right now, we got two uh, backfire cars in the top 10. I don't know if they're part of the same squad, though. Beaver has put a bit of a padding on his lead here. Now has about eight tenths, six tenths of a second lead. As uh, we are now coming to uh, 13 to go. Oh, and Gavin Sanders diving for the pits. What happened? Why are we diving for the pits? Did he just want to do a short stint on the reds? And is he going to go to the blacks? Is everyone going to have to stop again? We'll see. He is going to the prime tire. He is down and away, and he is good to the finish. I thought he was good to the finish for the first time, but he is not. He did a short stint on the alts, and he is down on the way. He is down sixth spot, but he gave up a ton of track position. So that now puts Rodrigo Munoz up in the P2. And if uh, Secret has to stop again, uh, he is currently on lap 11 of his stint. Uh, that means Munoz is going to have to uh, stop again. And that means uh, as uh, both the driveline cars get our duck out of the way there for the leaders. Uh, but that also means that uh, Rodrigo will have to stop again. And that probably means that Nicholas Johnston is going to inherit the lead late in this race. We shall see. We watch these leaders go through. 
Let's go a little bit through the field, check out the rest of the field. Jeff Groff here in a P11. And here is Evan. He is now down to 12th. Here is Dakota DeMed here in P13. Bit of an uneventful race, but a very uh, consistent race. Going to get some points out of this. Don Hunter in P7. Hunter just stopped for his last pit stop. Cody Claiborne there. We just saw him and his teammate JJ Wang, and he's in P15. Nick Goyette, P16. Coming off of pit road right behind Gavin Sanders. Zach Flaum. Going through the corner there with Oak on turn 12. P17, Logan Spath. Had a bit of a rough day, but he's soldiering on out in P18. JJ Wang, P19. Hugo Gallas uh, in uh, P20. 20 cars on the track. Uh, 19 on the lead lap, I believe. We'll check that out just one more time. Nope, we have uh, 14 on the lead lap. And I believe Dakota the Mid showing him in the pits. He gets down on the way right in front of the leader. So it uh, looks like the maid is going to be on the tail end of the lead lap. Here is Matthew Short. He is right in front of Caleb Bincy. He is fighting to stay in front of that. He just got out of the pits. Christopher Hill, three laps into his last stint, getting around Christian Jasper. So now we're, we're going to see some final stops here. Seifert, Munoz. Houston need to probably stop again. Johnson is going to be really close. I'm going to guess Johnson can probably make it. through 14, 14A, 15, and 16. Down in the 17, known as the hog pin. Down the main straight, and we are now checking off. 10 to go here at VIR. Can Seifert save enough fuel to get himself to the end here? He's on lap 14. I don't think he. Uh, I, I don't think he can. I think we're talking about 14, 15, 16 laps to a stint. So he is going to have to stop. Kind of caught up behind a slower car there. Logan Spath moves over, letting him on by. Down this very long straightaway. Actually, one of the more longer straights that they're on all season long, uh, this side of Indianapolis, really. There's uh, Zach Flaum off into the uh, the grass there. Trying to get back underway. Loses a position to Spath. He's back. Well, very gingerly coming back onto the racing surface. Letting some faster cars on by. He's back underway. 
And he currently is resuming his race, NP18. Take a look at the point standings one more time. Uh, Seifert with that uh, five-point lead over Piazza. Piazza uh, finishing a disappointing 23rd after starting from the pole. He'll get a bonus point for the pole and uh, everything that uh, comes with that, but uh, he's going to not earn very many points from this race altogether from a very rough start. Caleb Bensey is hanging on uh, by dear life now. Uh, he is now P9. Uh, he will make up some points here. Alex Vanessant has had a bad day. He's uh, finished and retired already at 21st. Gavin Sanders is looking to also uh, make up some ground here. He is currently in P5 and might be in a position to actually pick up the win depending on how the fuel mileage race runs out. Nine laps to go. That is the point situation as you see. And the leader is on pit road. The leader is on pit road as we have now Move to on board with your leader as he is coming to his spot. Hitting the, the marks up on the pneumatic jacks. They're going to uh, top off a tank with just enough to get him to the finish. They're going to give him the alt tires, the prime tires again, and out of the way. And there goes Gavin Sanders around him. Can he run down Gavin Sanders now with these fresher uh, prime tires? Let's ride along this lap with your with your points leader as he is now picked back up in this race in P5 as he tries to run down Gavin Sanders. See him on push to pass. That is the uh, green uh, banner um, border on his pie chart there, on his pie readout. And the flashing green lights. As soon as he comes off the power, the push to pass goes away. He is trying to run down Gavin Sanders. Got about a three second deficit, 3.2 second deficit to Gavin Sanders. Munoz on pit road. We'll check to his in car as he gets his spot. He's down and away, and he's chosen the alt tires to finish this race out the last seven laps. So he, you know he will be going hard. So now we come back up to the front, and here's Nick Johnston. Does he have enough fuel to go the distance? Right behind him, Matt Houston who has already gone over the 16 laps. So does he, he's gonna have to stop. We, we probably know that he is not gonna be able to go the distance. He's gonna need to stop. As you saw, going down a little straight there, Houston on push to pass. Trying to make a strong in lap, possibly. Yes, he is hitting pit road, and this is his final stop. So now this is going to turn over. P2 to Gavin Sanders, who is in the middle of a driveline sandwich at the moment. Actually, no, that's a driveline and uh like Nick Flaum there right in front of him. Or Zach Flaum. 
making his teammates with uh, Nick Goyette. Blaum going wide. Getting it back, gathered. Waiting for Munoz to pass, and he's back underway. So, treacherous going, getting passed by the leaders here. Not a lot of runoff area. Nick Johnston is your leader. He has a eight second lead. He is on well-worn alt tires at the moment. He is 13 laps into his current stint. He has six laps to go. He has all of his pushes to pass. And there is his direct nemesis, Gavin Sanders, as we turn the camera to him, right behind him there. Eight seconds, six laps. Let's watch how this plays out. Your push to pass situation is Johnson with 10, Gavin Sanders with three, Seifert with four, Munoz with three, Christopher Hill with six, Houston with four, Short with five, Bensi with six, Hunter with four, and Christian Jasper with five. That is your top 10. If you're just joining us, thanks for joining us tonight. It is the, as we like to say, the overused word, penultimate, the penultimate round of the season two of PRI Formula Indy Series coming to you from the, the Virginia International Raceway, VIR here, and that's the uh, Virginia is for Burritos Grand Prix by the, uh, sponsored by the Fat Bastard Burrito Company. There you see the Fat Bastard sponsored car of Gavin Sanders trying to run down your leader. He's now got it to seven and a half seconds. Six point seven seconds now as four laps to go. That's still a long ways, twelve uh, over twelve miles. The three point seven two mile circuit, seventeen turns. speak right now 6.3 there's that blue car off in the distance that is Gavin Sanders that is P2 trying to run down your leader right here in the white car the number 28 shell sponsored throwback to uh, uh, that's uh, Brian Herta back into the 90s there 2000s 90s the uh, Ray Hall Letterman racing livery Gavin Sanders down to 5.1 seconds now. A lot of cars lighting up push to pass now as we're getting toward the end of this race. Caleb Bency on push to pass. Right behind him, Chris Valenzuela on push to pass. Right behind him, Jeff Groff on push to pass. So a lot of drivers trying to maximize. Uh, it's like... Uh, Smoke them if you got them, because you can't take them with you. 
Use them if you can. Of course, keep in mind, if you use too much push to pass, that will impact your fuel mileage. Gavin Sanders on push to pass now has it under five seconds. Getting closer, but still a long way to go. There's that blue car in the distance. There is our leader. I don't think Gavin's gonna have enough time to reel this one in. We shall see. A lot can happen. There is lap traffic in front of your leader right now in the form of a Dakota to Maid. Dakota probably will move over and allow uh, the leader on by once he gets close enough. But right now, it's, uh, I mean, the two to go now. 4.3, 4.2 seconds over P2 of Gavin Sanders. Johnson with the one-stop strategy seems to be paying off. Just over a lap and a half to go. There is Sanders. He's on his next to last push to pass there, coming down the long straight, trying to cut into this lead. Somehow get close enough to make a move on your leader. Got it to 2.6 seconds. You see Dakota moving over, allowing the leaders on by. Now the leaders are in direct contact with one another. We're on the final lap. White flag is in the air. 2.3 seconds lead for Johnston over Sanders. It's looking like a pretty much a repeat from uh, Long Beach a couple weeks ago where Sanders chased down Johnston all the way to the end. Coming down into turns 11 and 12. And around the final slow speed corner. Gavin on his last push to pass, trying to make as much ground up as he can. But I don't think he's going to be able to do it. He's just outside of the draft window. He's not going to get any closer than he is right now at the moment until we get to these corners. All Johnson needs to do is navigate 14, 14A, 15, and 16 make it through the pin and he is on his way home for his second formula indy series victory and making himself the first repeat winner this season coming off of corner number seven and weaving on his way down the home stretch nicholas johnston with win number two the first repeat winner of the second season of the formula indy series p2 is gavin sanders with a great recovery from running in the pits. Currently watching P3 as he just finished. Rodrigo Munoz followed by Christopher Hill. Let's get a last word in from our sponsors and we will join the victors in the interview room here in just a moment. I'm the owner and chief instructor of Precision Racing Instruction. I've been coaching racing and high performance driving professionally for over 22 years. With experience in anything from carts to formula cars to rally cars to sports cars to sim racing and a bit of everything in between, I can help you no matter what form of racing you do. 
We specialize in a precision approach to improving both your car control and racecraft to make you the best driver you can be. For a limited time, we are offering a special deal for anyone who mentions the Formula Indy Series, 15% off your first coaching session, either in the sim or in person. On top of that, I'm offering a one-time free video or data analysis for new students. Reach out to us either through Instagram or Facebook. All right, there we see our leader pulling into the pits there. Let's take a look at the, the final results for today's race. Nicholas Johnson with his second win of the season that finishes in P1. Gavin Sanders with a, yet another podium, finishing P2. Rodrigo Munoz with his first podium of the year, finishing P3. Hill and Houston round out the top five. Short, Seifert, Hunter, Bensey, and Venezuela, your top ten. Seifert finishing ahead of Bensey, so he is going to make up some points here. And uh, we'll get a final calculation here later in the week of what the point difference is going into the final race next week at Interlagos. Your top 15, Groff, Jasper, Zelznik, Demade, and Goyette. Moving on to the top 20 is Spath, Wang, Flaum, Gallas, and Claiborne. And the remainder of the field is Alex Vanessant uh, with a disappointing 21st. Principal Dan with a disappointing 23rd. Armando Edwards uh, also with a disappointing 24th. Pete Johnchak 25th. And Charles Baldwin clocking in on 22nd. That rounds out your 25 car field. Let's check and see who might be in the interview room. And let's see if we can pull someone in here to talk first. And I see Rodrigo Munoz, so we will bring him on down now. Hey, Rodrigo, uh, first podium of the year. Tell us about your race, man. Well, hello, everyone was a, a crazy, crazy race, very intense. I, I was there in the front from the beginning, then I made a mistake, then back again, and <laughs> it was now up and down. Um, you seem to do pretty well at this track. Did this, uh, this style of course agree with your driving style, or is uh, uh, you've had a lot, of, or maybe you've had a lot of experience here at Virginia International? Uh, uh, what was it? Is it just your style, or you had a lot of practice here? No, it's the first time I race here. Wow. But the, the the track is is suit me, I think, because I like the tracks not the with high and low. I, I love that kind of track and blind corners and all that stuff. So I think I it suited me very well. Um, what was the, the big the difference between the um, uh, the prime tires and the alt tires? How bad of a fall off was it between the black and the red tires? Yes, in the practice uh, with my team, we noticed that the, the red didn't didn't last too much. Uh, half of the stint, mm -hmm. I think. So we, we decided to go black, black and red to the end with less uh, fuel, so I, I think it, it, it paid off. It was a good decision. Um, moving on next week, uh, we're going to uh, enter Lagos in Brazil. I, I'm assuming that you have some uh, track time there. What are your thoughts of Inter Lagos and your chances uh, next week uh, for the final round of uh, season two? Another uh, good track, very, very nice to race. To race. Uh, I have experience in the IndyCar there, so I know it a little bit. Uh, my expect is to have a nice race. Uh, I, I didn't want to be interfering the championship uh, fight because I think I, I, I too far away from the championship. But, uh, <laughs> I, have, I, have, I want to have a nice race and I hope I win. It would be very nice. <laughs> Uh, before we let you go, um, is there anybody they'd like to uh, shout out to, say hi to while we got you here? Yes, uh, hi to all my Backfire team. Yeah, they support me very, uh, very, very nice all the season. 
and we are trying to finish the season strong. And uh, and uh, also, uh, while we got you here, uh, do you have anything you want to say in your own language? I want to backfire. <laughs> All right. Well, there you go. Uh, congratulations. Uh, I know you've had a, a, a long season and have, uh, you've had a, a podium long in coming. So congratulations on getting the podium. Uh, hope you can do better next week. And uh, congratulations, though, on the P3. So we'll see you next week and uh, good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent job. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> All right, let's bring down the defending series champion, Gavin Sanders, down to the booth. Hey, Gavin, it uh, looks like you just possibly ran out a little bit of a time there. Uh, maybe if you had uh, maybe another four or five laps, maybe you could have ran him down. Uh, looked like you possibly had the strategy that was going to win it, but uh, uh, Johnson just decided to do a one-stopper and everyone else decided to do multiples. Yeah, no, congrats to him. He he really nailed the strategy there because I, I obviously starting from the pits, I kind of got uh, stuck running in the uh, the strategy that kind of everybody else decided on with the two stop, um, just kind of maximizing the pace and getting the track position back. But um, yeah, no, it, it, <laughs> if there was another lap or so or something like that, I think uh, it would be well, it was already a close race, but it, we I might have had a chance to attack, but. Uh, what can you do, right? <laughs> shoulda, shoulda, woulda, coulda, right? Um, yeah. yeah, it's a pretty amazing um, uh, the start from the pits that you got, but uh, it looks like uh, uh, there was a bit of a bobble going into turn one uh, with the leader, and it kind of backed a number of cars up. Did that help you uh, gain a lot of positions with that bobble and that backup kind of happening in turns one and two? I I think it kind of checked the field up a little bit. I didn't necessarily gain many positions from it. I was kind of uh, taking it slow, not trying to knock my front wing off or anything like that, but um, it uh, it definitely um, paid dividends at the end, towards the uh, the end of the first stint there when I managed to get up to close to the top seven. Um, it kind of made sure that they were close enough for within striking distance, so I could uh, um, make something happen the second stint, and then from there it was just kind of see who's on what strategy. And uh, Nate probably would have had a really good chance. Uh, if his screen hadn't frozen, um, he was coming very, very quickly towards me, and he might have even had a shot at uh, Nicholas before the end there. But, yeah, it was uh, not so bad. <laughs> um, just bluntly, this season has not been necessarily kind to you. You have a couple podiums. You do have a win. Um, a number of just unfortunate events have kind of snake bitten you this entire season. Um a bit of that, uh, do, do you think it's just a little bit of bad luck uh, and also uh, maybe the defending champ Jinx uh, would would maybe season three be looking a, bit, a little bit better if you, or maybe repeating if some of those events never uh, snake bitten you? I think we would have had a lot better chance if uh, I could have got the first three races back. Um, obviously, Indy was kind of heartbreaking and then from there just minor mistakes and everybody in this series obviously um track position is king in these races and uh lap one tends to create a bit of a cluster uh so to speak <laughs> um just because everybody needs to you need to go right away um but uh yeah it's it uh definitely would be nice to get a few of those races back <laughs> Well, uh, we are going to one place that uh, you and uh, your old teammate had uh, decent uh, luck at uh, last year in an exhibition race at Interlagos. Um, your thoughts just trying to finish out this season as strong as possible? Yeah, shoot for the win. I think um, uh, the Camigo Esports cars are always pretty quick um, and just proving the fact that, hey, we're here, we can finish the races, and... Uh, and just kind of show that, hey, we are in the conversation no matter what is kind of the goal going into Season 3. Uh, Shout-outs. I'm sure that a uh, big shout-out for, uh, of course, uh, today's title sponsor, uh, Fat Bastard Burrito. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, massive. It was super cool to uh, to finally get this track and uh, and them into uh, a, an in iRacing series. Um, I love this track, and obviously Fat Bastard is the best burritos in Canada, obviously. So uh, it was pretty, pretty freaking cool. Um, as well, shout out to Braid Motorsport, Alpine Stars, Stilo, Team 4, 
uh, and Team Kimigoi. Well, there you have it. Uh, the number one defending champ probably is not going to be the number one again <laughs> next year, but uh, you know, it's it's uh, hit the reset button and uh, get the reset on luck, and uh, maybe things fall our way a different uh, different time going next season. So I'm sure um, we're going to be fielding a, a, another car for you again next season. So uh, looking forward to it. Looking forward to seeing you what you could do at Interlagos. Uh, have yourself a good week and uh, get some rest, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Sounds good. Talk to you next week. All right. All right. And bringing down Nicholas Johnston. There he is. Uh, three races, two podiums, and two wins. Not too bad. Not too uh, too shabby the way to start off uh, the FIS career here. Uh, tell us about your race. You just decided to go on that one stopper. Oh, it seemed, almost seemed like a no-brainer, but you're the only one that did it. Uh, it took a lot of fuel saving carry to make it happen my fuel number was 3.68 and under green flat out you're looking at low to mid fours as far as leaders per lap burn so i just put on fuel map five and did a lot of lifting and coasting i felt like at the beginning of the race the first inning was going to be great because i was sticking right with the leaders with all the fuel saving i was like okay this is going to be not too bad and should work out pretty well but the uh, the reds were not good on a long run, so pushing them the uh, the 19 laps there was difficult. Yeah, that's a thing we heard from other drivers is that the reds were really really bad, uh, and you went I think the longest on any stint with the reds, uh, for sure. Um, as uh, as you got past much past like five or six laps. Um, the big thing that you had was distance on the racetrack, uh, but the strategy definitely had a big um, uh, decision in that. Uh, how many laps did you do in uh, engine map five, and uh, how many laps did you do really with the coast, uh, the clutching and coasting? I mean, that obviously won you the race, So, uh, and it didn't look to me that you were really that slow, to be honest. Yeah, it was a 30-lap race, so I went 19 laps of stint, 19 on the blacks, 19 on the reds. Um, I could have pushed the black stint one more lap to go 20, but I decided just to go ahead and bring it in, knowing that um, those guys were going to start coming back as their tires heated up. At that point, they probably yeah. had like four to five laps on their tires, so I didn't want to lose too much in the pit stop phase. And uh, yeah, just a lot of lifting coasting. It's not the most exciting thing in the world. But... <laughs> hey, it, it, it won. <laughs> you, you can't argue with results. Um Next week, uh, moving on to uh, Interlagos, uh, the series, uh, you were not part of the series then, but the, the series did run an exhibition race there uh, prior to season one. Um, what is your experience with any cars at Interlagos, and uh, what do you think your chances are? Um, I have absolutely zero laps there in the IndyCar, so we'll have to jump in some of the testing sessions these guys put up over the weekend and uh, hopefully get some pace and see where it all plays out hopefully we'll be up in the top five battling for the win but you never know there's so many good drivers in this series the depth is insane to be on what's this the ninth round yeah and i'm the first two-time winner yeah so i mean that just right there just explains like how crazy it is the amount of drivers that are in this series and the amount who can take the win each night so it's a good feeling to be able to get two on them yeah, this uh, just about every week. This race, this series also has a pretty good, uh, uh, even though it doesn't matter because this is not an official race. Uh, it still has a pretty good strength of field number for being a league race. So uh, there's a lot to uh, be said about that. So you are absolutely correct. Uh, so uh, congratulations on the win, the second win of the season, uh, third straight podium. Haven't finished worse than second. Um, anybody you want to say hi to, shout out to before we let you go? Uh, just want. Thank you guys for putting on this broadcast and the stream and from the indie series for putting it on. Um, if my girlfriend's still up watching, hi, Danielle. Thank you for watching. Love you. <laughs> and uh, just really a shout to the drivers that we need to relax on lap one. The tires are cold. Mm -hmm. The race is long. Yep. Let things come to you. Yep. Because it's three weeks, and each time I've seen – maybe a little bit more unnecessary carnage on lap one than there probably should be. Right. I mean, tonight it, it was 
really close. I mean, uh, what was it Dan? Yeah. Dan, I mean, I, I got a great start and raced him down to turn one. He outbraked himself a little bit, and I had to duck under him, and Nate actually was in a little bit too deep and ended up potting me a little bit. It was just really hectic, I think, for lap one, and hopefully as the season goes on and people get used to racing each other, maybe uh, that will clean up a little bit. I keep saying uh, with these cars, because I, I broadcast the um, uh, also on Race First, the um... – um, and also on virtual racing dot network, uh, we do the, uh, the Euro strike, the field, uh, Indy fixed series. And then the, uh, of the Monday strike, the field, Indy fixed, uh, series, official races. And, um, those races really aren't designed for mini marathons. They're basically sprints. And I, I think when drivers sometimes get into, uh, the cockpits of these cars, they, they get themselves and, uh, sprint minded, and uh, really what everything you said is correct um patience is always rewarded in these particular cars and a lot of people don't realize that they don't often think about that because they see that as a position they need to get now and they probably they can't you know they don't picture themselves getting that position later when you know really we're all human you see how much little runoff for instance at this course there is that even if you get two wheels off you got to slow down so chances are if you're behind a car that does that you're going to get the position uh, provided that you keep all four on the on the pavement the entire time, you're probably in for a decent finish. Uh, and just all you have to do is be uh, be patient. Uh, patience uh, does uh, it does pay, and patient is rewarded in these cars. Everything you said is there correct. So um, I, I think sometimes people, when they get behind the wheel of an Indy car, they they kind of mistake it for an F1 car, which is go 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 all the time. Uh, and Indy cars necessarily um, don't reward that type of strategy. So. Everything you said is correct, and uh, uh, I'm hoping that uh, we'll see uh, more drivers uh, pick up your patience uh, next week and in the next season uh, going forward with that first lap because uh, the more cars we have at contention, of course, uh, makes it more exciting for everybody watching at home. So uh, congratulations on your win again. I uh, hope to see you again next week, and uh, uh, have yourself a great week, and uh, we'll talk again. We'll see you next Tuesday. Have a great week. Uh, all right, and that does it. So let's do the uh, the results one more time before getting on out of here. Uh, your winner again is, uh, we just spoke with him, Nicholas Johnson, the second win of the year, the first repeat winner of this season. The defending series champion, Gavin Sanders, finishes in P2, another podium for him. Uh, he has only one season, uh, one win this season, uh, but a lot of bad luck and has really put him out of the running to repeat uh, for the title, he is uh, finishing P2, hoping to finish out the season strong. And Rodrigo Munoz uh, with the Backfire team finishes uh, on the podium for the first time this season in P3. Your top five is Christopher Hill and Matt Houston. Your top ten is Matthew Short, Nate Seifkert, your, uh, your points leader, who is going to extend his points lead over Caleb Bency. Don Hunter is P8. Caleb Bency, uh, the aforementioned Bency, is nine. Chris Valenzuela is P10. Your top 15, Jeff Groff, Christian Jasper, Evan Zelznik, Dakota DeMint, and Nick Goyette. Getting to the next page. Is uh, Logan Spath, uh, JJ Wang, Zachary Flaum, Hugo Gallas, and Cody Claiborne. And then rounding out the remainder of the field uh, with uh, just some disappointing runs for one reason or another. Alex Vanasant, 21st. Uh, Charles Baldwin in 22nd. Dan Piazza in 23rd after starting from the pole. Armando Edwards in 24th. And Peter Donchek in 25th. I think that does it, folks. Uh, we've had ourselves a, a really good race and a really good night. And we want to thank everybody uh, for joining us tonight. So that's it for tonight. Once again, your podium from Virginia International is... Uh, we got Johnson. We got Gavin Sanders. And we got... Uh, Munoz, uh, there are our top three right there. So join us next week for Championship Tuesday as the series moves on to Interlagos in Brazil for the final round of Season 2 of the PRI Formula Indy Series. It's the Grand Prix of Brazil brought to you by Midwest Kidney Warriors. 
Formula Indy Series sponsorship, title sponsorship paid for by Precision Racing Instruction. Want to get faster? PRI will train you to be the best driver you can be. Over 21 years of professional racing instruction experience to help you. Check out Precision Racing Instruction today on Facebook and Instagram for contact details. Now, please do leave a comment below and listen on how we talk tonight's race. Like, share, and subscribe. And while you're at it, hit the bell for weekly reminders of other race first iRacing programming, such as the Monday Night Indy Fixed Top Split and the BMW Car Club of America Simmer Racing Series on Thursdays. Only a couple more weeks of that. And soon, very, very soon, in about a month, starting December 1st, the Reddit IndyCar League returns now as the Revolution IndyCar League for season four of the Schaefer IndyCar Series. To learn more about Race First and what we do, visit racefirst.com or follow us on Twitter. You can follow me, Gary Godso, on Twitter at Gary Godso. Thanks to everyone who took time to watch. Be sure to join me again next week. Same time, same channel. That's uh, Championship uh, uh, Tuesday. That's uh, next Tuesday, 845 Eastern on YouTube at youtube.com slash race first. Don't forget there's a time change next week. So set your clocks accordingly. So for everyone at Race First, I am Gary Gossip saying to all, stay happy and healthy. And to all of our men and women serving in the military and as first responders, Godspeed, God bless, and come home safe. Thanks again, and we'll catch you next week for Championship Tuesday as we will crown a new champion of the PRI Formula Indy Series. Good night.